Greetings and welcome to Ch Channel Other Doc. I'm Jim, I use he, him pronouns, and today we are playing this channel's second one-shot of For the Queen by Alex Roberts, a game where we'll be telling the story of members of a royal court accompanying their monarch on a mission to engage with a foreign power. Uh, we're going to go around and say hello to everybody, and uh, I'm actually going to go clockwise this time, I think like the game suggests. Uh, in, in an effort to try to figure this out, uh, just based on the way that I have folks on the overlay. Um, and uh, we'll just, uh, if you would, just uh, say who you are and any favorite piece of uh, uh, narrative RPG media. Uh, and uh, that can be pretty much anything, even just something you don't like. Doesn't even have to be your favorite. And uh, we shall go around and start with Jess. Hello! Hello to everyone. I am Jess. I go by Burst of Hope on Twitter. I use she, they pronouns. And I'm super excited for the game today. Um, narrative RPG that I super enjoy. Uh, long form, Invisible Sun, hands down. I'm itching to play. I know I'm going to start playing very, very soon. But the books are gorgeous. The narrative is awesome. But also, there's a little zine called Obachan. And it's a little zine. On the, uh, powered by the apocalypse, and you all play grandmas that are super powered. And the game starts by, you know, spilling the tea, having some gossip, and then saving the world. So I'm super excited. I'm going to bring that to Gen Con and maybe play some pickup games. That we will definitely delight. play that. Mm -hmm. That is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's great. <laughs> that's, that's, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. And uh, let us move on to Alex. Hello. Hello, um, I am Alex Wolf. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I will also be at Gen Con, hopefully playing this amazing grandma RPG. Um, <laughs> given that we are housing together, we will make this happen. <laughs> um, uh, favorite storytelling, uh, Numenera. Numenera is my baby, I love it. I love Numenera so, so much. I have all the books. I will be running an Aeon Priest one shot that I will be announcing um, at some point, and it will be good, fun times, horror in space. That's what I'm all about space and horror. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And now let's say hello to Lee. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm Lee. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, and I think my favorite RPG stuff would just be homebrew D&D. &D. That's all I have to say. Cool. Yeah, no, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, it's for, first stuff I, I played, and we played for years in the homebrew campaign. It's, uh, you can do some awesome storytelling with that. And finally, Levi. Hello. Hi, I'm Levi Phipps. I use he and pronouns. And as for my favorite uh, storytelling RPG, I have a couple of uh, answers, actually. One is like uh, prompt based stuff, like this, Fall of Magic, and uh, Spoken Magic, which I'm looking to get into. And there is another one. Jim is quite familiar with it. I am horribly addicted to Urban Shadows. I, I need help. Yes. You and me both, pal. <laughs> like try. I, I've been trying to worm my way into every single Urban Shadows game that I've ever seen happening. Uh, it's it's a, it's a sickness. It really is. Urban Shadows and Grandmas. I have a lot of research to do. <laughs> <laughs> Powered by the Apocalypse, it's your next addiction. Mm. Oh, yeah. For real though. Yeah. Fighting yeah. it so hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why, I, I, that's the reason why like every other month on this, every other mini campaign I do on this channel on a monthly basis is a Powered by the Apocalypse game because uh, I want to try all of them. But uh, I think for, for myself, uh, last week I said Fiasco. Uh, this week I will say a... Um, there is a, uh, there is this, I guess it would technically be a, a hack of the quiet year, although it was put out by the same author. Um, mm. it, uh, is called the deep forest. Uh, and it's just basically about playing the monsters in a forest after the, after the adventurers have left, after the human colonists have gone. And it is, uh, so much fun. It is crazy fun. Um, so I highly recommend the, checking out The Deep Forest, which is also free. You just go to the freaking website and you can get it. Um, but before we dive into this game, 
Uh, like we do with most games on this channel, we are using the X card, the N card, and the O card. Uh, so if we hit something that's crossing a line for one of the players, any of them can type an X in the Zoom video chat or anywhere else, or make an X symbol, uh, and we'll back up and we'll do something else. Uh, if something happens that you're okay having in the game, but you don't want a graphic description of it, uh, you can type an N in the Zoom chat and we'll fade to black on it or put it behind a veil. Uh, so it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Uh, finally, if you're exploring a topic or area of roleplay that's particularly intense for you, but you want to keep going, uh, you, you can put an O in the chat to let us know you're okay and that we're all good to keep piling on the drama. Uh, something else we can do is put an O with a question mark after it when we're moving into a difficult topic or say or do something and then think, maybe that might have been a little too much. Uh, then everyone else can respond to that and let us know if we're still doing okay. Neat thing about this game, it actually uses the X card in its mechanics. Um, we, we have, as uh, folks should be able to see, we, uh, we have an X right here, uh, and actually is, it's an even broader mandate than is often seen. It's, you, basically, it, if, if you don't think a card's going to work for the, the game or the character, you know, you draw a card and you just you don't like the card, you can X it. That's it. That's perfectly fine. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that's very cool that got incorporated into this, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm very glad to have it there. Um, so, let us get into this thing. Um, we are going to, so, if, if we will look up at roll 20, uh, let's see, the, the, we have the instructions, and you can, everyone should be able to hit the choose button and see the instructions here, uh, on the cards as they go through. Some of the cards, they're going to be variances, a couple of cards we skip, I'll, 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 I'll butt in when we get to that point, and, uh, uh we'll do that, but we're going to take turns reading. Uh, these cards, I guess I'll go ahead and start and we'll continue in the same order that I introduced everybody in, so we'll just keep going clockwise around the screen. Um, and, uh, so let's do this thing. Um, so the first card says, go around the table clockwise, taking turns reading these cards aloud. That was easy. And so Jess will get, uh, number two. Okay, so just choose the card and I'll do it in order. Yeah, okay. hit choose and then you should see the card. Number two. In order. The land you live in has been at war for as long as any of you have been alive. Okay. And then it goes around to Alex for the third card. Um, I think you're muted. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, three. The queen has decided to undertake a long and perilous journey to broker an alliance with a distant power. All right. And then it passes over to Lee. The queen has chosen all of you and no one else to be her retinue and accompany her on this journey. Okay. And then Levi. She chose you because she knows that you love her. And, let's see, card six says, You are welcome to look through the queen cards for inspiration. If there is one that seems right for the group, place it on the table to inspire your story. I've got an additional instruction here. The queen cards are in the queen deck. You can have everyone click choose to look at the deck, draw a single card at random, or draw a few to pick between. We'll decide when we get to that point what we want to do. Um, and we're supposed to ignore number seven because it gets addressed later, so... Uh, card number eight will then go to Jess. Shuffle the red prompt cards and place them face down in the center of the table. Put the oh, are we ignoring the queen is under attack card? Oh no, we, we're we're using that. Oh. Um, I've got an addendum after that. Okay, put the the queen is under attack card in the middle of the deck for a game that takes approximately 30 minutes or shuffle it into the bottom third of the deck to play for an hour or more. Now, I'm going to say that I did this last time. It was in the bottom third of the deck and the game went on for, for almost like four hours and we never even got anywhere near it. So uh, <laughs> That's so impressive. <laughs> Wildly so, intrigued. So I think the place that I've put it in, I will, I will check again. Uh, before we start, I think the place I put it in is a little past halfway, um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, basically, I, I can do all that under the uh, uh, on this end um, as as we're doing that. Um, and so, let's move on to uh, card number ten. 
Uh, when you have read the instruction cards, continue clockwise with the red prompt cards. Taking turn, oh, take turns reading the questions out loud. Interpret those questions and answer them however you wish. Uh, other players may ask you questions or make suggestions on your turn, but whether you answer those questions or include those, those suggestions is entirely up to you. And says, place the X card somewhere where everyone can easily reach it. I, hopefully everyone can reach the X card. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we should be good. And, and I already lost what number am I reading? 13, sorry. <laughs> so bad at numbers. Okay. If you encounter a card or an answer that you don't want to be included in the game, please tap the X card. That content is removed from the game. And uh, in Roll20, there's a thing, if you want to tap it, you can just sort of click on it and, and do it. Or you can, I, you can just say, uh, it, if, we some, if we have trouble seeing that or whatever, you just say, can we X card the thing? Yeah, it should be just fine. Um, and uh, then 14. 14. If you draw a card that is removed this way, simply draw another card. You can X a card that you drew yourself. Uh, 15. Mm-hmm can also pass on your turn. To do so, give the prompt card you drew to the next player and say, I'd like to hear your answer on this question. Yeah, this is a power move. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, wait, hold on. 16. Yeah, 16. A prompt card can be, can be passed around until the table, around the table until someone applies the X card to it. And 17, continue answering, passing, and Xing questions until the Queen is under attack card is drawn. 18, each player should answer that question in turn. Then the game is over. 19, whoever wants to can draw the first prompt card. And there we go. <laughs> what does our Queen look like? Yes, we need to decide. Now, do we want to choose one, or do we want to draw, draw a few at random and choose from them, or how do we want to do this? I say we draw like three and choose from that. Yeah, the art is so pretty. It's, it's so good. It's right. I'm gonna it's go so ahead cool. and shuffle Wait. the queen deck then. I always want the the one that looks the most evil. I mean, I am drinking from the. Uh, <laughs> now, now, last night we did that. Uh, last night, last <laughs> week we did the silhouette. So I I am going to uh, I am gonna X the silhouette because I, I am I am interested in variety. Um, yes. But uh, if if it comes up, let's see what we got. Ooh. And the third one I tried to draw vanished somewhere, so let me try that again. There we go. Oh, okay. Here's what we got. Mm-hmm. Do you like any of these? I love them all for different reasons. Mm-hmm. They're all very good. I'm a fan on uh, the one on the right here. Uh, the... the rose yeah. updo? Yeah. Okay. She seems a little conniving yeah. in her prime years, probably. Hmm. I'm honestly game with any one of them. I can see a very good story out of out of them. I do like me some old ladies, obviously. So, so the one on the right looks like she's from House. I think it was called House Tyrell in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> kind of got that like old "Don't mess with me" <laughs> vibe. I want to know how she holds up all those necklaces. Mm. They're not falling, resting on each other. <laughs> For the power of queendom. <laughs> I mean, you would use magic on that. Let's be real here. <laughs> Fair. Just like the way she's laid her edges. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Lee, do you have a preference? Uh, no, that last one looks good to me. Okay. Yeah, we going with the last one? Yeah. I was theorizing that she had, like, maybe a bar in the back would hold up the necklaces. Oh! Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. yeah the, She's uh, in line. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing, toying with my volume control just a tiny bit because apparently uh, I'm coming in soft. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can real quick uh, adjust the thing on the... Just adjust the setting because sometimes that happens. Yay! Um, where I will... Uh, I will not be heard quite as much, okay. um, but uh, I'll do that as I'll do that kind of as we go here, and we'll we'll hopefully get there. Um, 
Okay. Uh, so that's those are the instructions. I shall now I shall now hide both of both the, both of those decks from us, <coughs> so we don't have to worry about them. And uh, now uh, let me just make let me just check to make sure I did the thing that I thought I did here. Four, eight, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, are you counting so, cards, sir? Are you manipulating our game? There's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not reading them, I'm just counting them. Um, so, uh, how do we want to do this? Who wants to go first? Do you want me to go first by way of demonstration, or does some, would someone else like to start? I'm fine in any way, shape, or form, and I'm uh, willing to start. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we can uh, go clockwise uh, from you if you so desire. All right. Let's start doing this thing. Uh -huh. The queen is not your queen. Why do you serve her anyway? Hmm. I think uh, it is possible that uh, I am a fair bit older than uh, our current queen and I had served under her mother. Uh, but uh, after uh, our, our current queen's uh, parents passing, I was the regent uh, until she was of age. And so by just method of my position, I uh, I still uh, guide her to, uh, a as our nation's queen. So how do you feel did about you... the new admin? Sorry. <laughs> no, you're okay. <laughs> um, did you lose power, like in a like an advisor sort of way? You you a little salty, bro? <laughs> uh, not bitter. Like when I had signed to be, when I had volunteered to be the regent, I knew what I was getting into. Cool. So, yeah. How do you feel about the new administration? <laughs> uh. There are things that I had done differently, uh, but most of her choices are... I have no vocal complaints. Vocal. Precisely. Your face says it all, though, Levi. Indeed. <laughs> Do you have any non-vocal complaints? <laughs> <laughs> like guffaws behind her? <laughs> uh, I, I think... Uh, Whenever we attend meetings, there is the occasional moment, not too frequently, that I kind of... I think we lost you. Oh. Can you... Uh, hello? Can you yeah. I think... Here we go. Can you, we can can you hear, hear you? I yeah. Can hear you. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, I think that there are points uh, during meetings where if one were to uh, catch me at the corner there, I, I make... A basically, I I can tell that I'm occasionally confused by her choices. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I just figured out what the problem was on my end. Ha ha. Ah. Okay. Quit can't uh, tinkering, just... ticking or tinkering around, Jim. Jeez. Mm -hmm. We're trying to. <laughs> How dare technology not All cooperate? Right, there we go. Okay. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Yay, audio. Um, <laughs> did anyone have any further questions for Levi? No further questions from me. <laughs> I am satisfied with my turn. All right. I shall go ahead and go then. Let's see. Why do you think the queen trusts you enough to bring you on this journey? Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, Perhaps I would have, uh, I, I'd have a better grasp on it if I knew who I was yet, but I've been wanting to sort of let the let this be defined. So, um, I think that, uh, sure, let's do it. Um, <laughs> the, the queen trusts me enough uh, to bring me on this journey because I only kill the people that she specifies. Are you her hitman? Uh, I think Hitman's uh, perhaps one way one could describe it. I, I, are you I'm on a, her payroll or are you paid under the table? I am a problem solver. 
and uh, I, uh, I don't, I, I don't think that, I don't think that my name shows up in the books per se. There are certain security issues involved there, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's uh, you know there, there I I do receive uh, I, I I do receive compensation for the job that I do. Which, you know, it's, it's, it's an important job. <laughs> yes. So I presume that you have some cover position uh, that, that you say that you are to either anyone who asks or to the rest of us. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm an advisor. Ah. I'm, uh... Do you think anyone in this party knows what you actually do? I think there's a suspicion at the very least among someone. Um, not sure who. It's someone probably, one or more people probably suspect what I do. Did you do the same job for the previous queen? Uh, some, yes. Uh, there was a, uh, the, it was roughly around the near the end of her reign that I was recruited. Any other questions, Alex? Mm -hmm. I'm saving mine. <laughs> Any other questions, Yonder? <laughs> All right. Good. Oh, that makes it my turn. I should be more cognizant because it's different <laughs> than what Zoom looks like. Okay. Yeah. I am just listening and absorbing everyone's stories. <laughs> Too smart. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's my card. No. Touch. What do I do? Draw? Uh, One? So yeah, if you draw, then it'll put it in your hand, and then you can move it from your hand to the table. Oh uh, my You can gosh. also, if you want, uh, when you hover mm -hmm. over it, you'll see that it'll sort of drift a card up, and you can click on that, and oh. it'll flip it over and turn it, and then you can grab that and drag it over if you so Yeah, yeah, okay, so like a magician's sleight of hand, it goes floo. Okay. Oh no, I've had this card. <laughs> the queen touched you once. What about the memory of that? We'll stay with you forever. <laughs> um when I was a young warthog So when I was a kid I tended to run around the streets and enjoy a good hobby of pickpocketing everyone. And I made the mistake once of trying to pickpocket the queen while she was undercover. And she very aggressively yanked my hair as I was trying to run away. And uh, she squatted down and gave me a lecture about why stealing is bad and you should serve the country a better way. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Did I take that seriously? Maybe, but I will always remember that. Did, uh, did did you get anything? <laughs> oh no, she absolutely yanked. I like I, I had like a, one of the highest dollar coins, and she was like, "Really? Come on!" <laughs> and I wasn't that. I wasn't like street rat. I wasn't super poor. I was doing it more for fun. I was like <sighs> middle of the road, so not. It, I was pretty deplorable. <laughs> it was the lesson I should have learned. Did that have any effect on uh, obtaining the position that you've gotten now? I am a swift, quiet, sneaky one. Whether or not you know what I do is a question. Do other people know about your original uh, encounter with the queen, or is it something you try to keep secret? Mm, good question. Um, I think it's one of those stories that generally is kind of embarrassing, but if you get enough drinks in me, it's the one that I will tell. 
lovingly and loudly. So, so like the world's worst kept secret, basically. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, I feel like, is this an auctioneer situation? Like, going once, what, going uh, twice! Yeah, I know, it could be. Uh, I, I am curious what you think the uh, the queen saw in you that led to your having this position now. What the queen saw in me? Um, well, I wrote her throughout my adolescence, it was formative and it took me a long time. Like when she sat, sat me down, I was irreverent about it. But like when I became of age, I realized that morality is something I should hold to in the country. We had something to fight for. Maybe I had something to fight for on a more personal level. So I hand wrote a letter to her apologizing for being a little shite as a kid and that I'd seen the light. And I wrote a poem where I rhymed shite with light. And then I wore glasses to make myself more academical. <laughs> she could tell by the way that the, the handwriting of the poem was that it was written by someone wearing academical glasses. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. That's how that works. <laughs> I don't doubt it for a moment. Any further questions? Nope. All right, quiet one. What's your prompt? <laughs> okay, let's see if I can fight with whole 20 and make this happen. Uh, oh, it went into my deck. Okay, I have to drag it out. Oh, here we go. What makes the queen ugly in your eyes? So, the queen has attracted this motley crew of you know fairly interesting people with fairly interesting backgrounds um and i find that it does not sit well with my own personal moral compass i am the queen's knight i am the queen's uh personal guard and i take great affront to the types of individuals she has brought into her orbit those who would kill for money or steal for fun um and i don't understand why my queen would do this um but i love my queen and i want to trust her and respect her and know that perhaps she sees a goodness in these people sort of what she saw in me um though some would call me ugly and cruel and a monster uh but she did not and she made me her knight and she saw that i was good so that is what makes her ugly in my eyes it is the company she sometimes keeps you trying to say something about me and jim i don't know you trying to say we're, we're shady? Is this, is this shady supposed to be a bad thing? Oh, I don't know. That's what you get from that. That might even say more about you, frankly. Like a bad vibe. My casual standing there of passing oh. judgment on others I barely know say more about me than it does about them, perhaps. <laughs> We kind of judge you on it our, in our midst. I see, I see. You, how, how long have you served the, uh, this queen? I have served the queen since I was a child. Since they were a wee lass, eh? And you just see me strutting in, as, and I'm like, yep. Here I am, like one of the newest crew. I got this. Cracks knuckles, and you look at me. You're like, <laughs> have you? Did you always want to be a knight when uh, when you were a kid? I wanted to be good, and I wanted to protect people, and I wanted to help people. And I saw in the knights 
um, that protected the queen the opportunity to do that. And so I suppose I did always want to be a knight, though I might not have always known that I wanted to be a knight. With such a noble cause, why do you say that some people might call you cruel? Because of my uh, parentage. Ooh. And I, uh, oh, do we all know of your parentage? You do not, Who's your but daddy? there are rumors. Damn it. Okay. And it is rumors about my, uh, um, it is rumors about my father. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like anytime we're around the campfire or at a bar or whatever, I'm, I'm always pestering you. Like, who are you? Who are you exactly, Ellie? But really, <laughs> look deep into your eyes. You can't look into your eyes. Maybe your soul. What do you feel in your soul? Who's your father? And it's kind of look at you sideways and go, fish, please. <laughs> Got it. Okay. No further questions for me. Oh no, Jim, you okay? I'll be fine. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. So, is it too I'm early in the game for rivalry? Should we dial it back a little bit? No, I'm good. It's great. This is wonderful. <laughs> this is so good. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. further questions, <laughs> and we move on. We move on to Lee. Ooh. There is a false rumor about me and the queen back at the royal court. Um, I think. Hmm. Hmm. There's rumors that I am a bad person. That I've been doing some of the same things that other people have been possibly rumored to do. Uh, how did it start? Damn, son. This is me. <laughs> um, one of the queen's attendants saw me talking with some shady people in town. Did they see you or your shady attendants passing anything between each other? A pouch of solicited items. Uh, I think that might be part of the rumor. Mm. Has anyone faced you, confronted you? about it directly not directly yet but i'm hearing it's mm. do you blame any one person for starting the rumor or do you think of any one person for starting the rumor i can think of somebody but I don't have the evidence to say for sure that it's them. How spicy is this? Is this like, this is back at the royal court. So like everyone's up in everyone's business and like what kind of backhanded comments have you heard? Have you gained a nickname yet from this? Ooh. I haven't heard a nickname yet. <laughs> no further questions. Was was this all relatively recently then? Is just like a the first time anything like this has happened or uh, is this been something going on for a while? This is new and I think that's why it's spreading around so much. So prior to this, 
Um, uh, you, you've you've been essentially a scion of goodness and loyalty. Yes. Or seemingly so. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> As a scion of goodness and loyalty myself, I completely uh, sympathize. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Loyalty to the coin. (laughs) It's so shiny. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't have any uh, questions. uh, I'm good. Alright. Who's our final intrepid traveler? I forgot the word. <laughs> so if we're uh, all alright, I'm going to draw just uh where was when was the last time the queen hurt you? Oh. oh. The last time? <laughs> Most recently um I think there was a point where I Attempted to uh, give her a bit, a bit of guidance, and I, as a pseudo parental figure, uh, ha- have the instinct to do uh, it. Escalated into a very mild uh, argument, and it ended with her saying, "I don't need you anymore," and that that hit hard. Was it in private, or did like was it around all of us, her closest guardsmen? It, it was not like behind, like it was uh, private-ish, but it wasn't like behind closed doors. So it's very possible that any of you who w- could feasibly have been there heard of it in her tent behind the flap, and we're just like it's not soundproof. <laughs> Like, I'm just picturing you all against the door frame. <laughs> if, if she said she doesn't need you anymore, then why do you think she still keeps you around? Yeah, that's my question, too. Good job. Uh, it, it's, it's not... It wasn't, not, it wasn't an official release. It's more so telling me to remember my place as a mere advisor. Mmm, like, bitch, don't tell me what to do. Yeah. Okay. Basically. You advise, you don't rule. Interesting. Precisely. What? My- Why does that hurt you so much? Because, like, I've been a servant of the crown for so long that uh, being made to feel uh, less useful uh, is definitely... A blow to the ego. What precipitated this confrontation? Um, I think there was a... I don't know what it was yet, but a potential uh, bargaining chip to uh, wherever we're traveling to. She suggested, oh, I could offer them this. And I was like, that might not be the best idea. And it was essentially me speaking out of turn that uh, sparked this. Damn. I look at you and I'm like, Levi, I respect you. You're, you're, uh, you've been around here a long time. <laughs> you've got something to provide. Just, you know, let her, let her chill a little. She's just a little... She wants to prove that she can rule. And we're trying to go, you know, high stress. We're going out to the, the place and the wars. And, you know, yeah. it'll be okay. Nice. Yeah. I, I'm wondering what it is then, given this confrontation, um, that you're expecting to end up doing on this trip. Hmm. I mean, the... I have been one of the uh, longest advisors, so of the small uh, pool of viziers that she has, uh, I was a relatively obvious choice, at least at the time. It 
could also see it too where our queen would not want to leave someone behind who had such influence in the past regime. Yes, it's possible that I have a uh, reputation in this other kingdom. Mm. Maybe her mother was more respected than she is. Very possible, yes. Yeah, I am satisfied with my turn. I have no further questions. Uh, yeah. right. And it's to me. All right. Oh, you are considered ugly by almost everyone you meet. That's that's fair. Uh, <laughs> how does the queen make you question that perception? Uh, so uh, this got a little bit weird. Uh, for me, at least uh, at the time that it was happening, I think um, that uh, later on it was sort of it's it kind of is it's it's one of those things that kind of was playing around in my head a bit um, because I mean you know what I uh, what I uh, what I do um, is is not something that uh, anyone should uh, ideally anyone should uh, should want to. Um, but, uh, it's, it, it is a very ugly job, but the queen seems to find, somehow, when we were discussing, she wanted the details, she always wants the details, unlike some of my previous employers, she wants to know exactly what happened, and I don't, at the time, again, I thought this was a little weird because she seemed to have a fascination with it and seemed to describe some things I had told her as being beautiful. And I don't know that it's necessarily that she's particularly bloodthirsty. I think she, now, now having more time to think about it, I think she actually saw a kind of, uh, she sees some kind of cycle of life type art going on. Um, and it's on a level that she sees something in what I do that I do not, but it has made me think about it. I feel like there's vampires involved somewhere here. <laughs> <laughs> We're feeling vampires. <laughs> This detail is so juicy, I don't know what to ask. I mean, yeah. I haven't killed anyone with a wooden stake recently, but I mean, I'm not going to say it's never happened. <laughs> Does she make you, like, give written reports, or is she listening to you and, like, voraciously writing it down herself? Um, I, yeah, it's, I, I don't, yeah, she doesn't uh, have me write... Um, I've never been terribly good at that, uh, but um, you know, she she I I just tell her what happened, and then she seems to make note of it. I never actually see her writing things. Um, I will say occasionally, like later on, I've sometimes been in rooms where I see that she's been doing, uh, like, she, she likes sometimes to make tapestries, things of that nature. She's, she's a little crafty. And I'll occasionally see something that I kind of half recognize. And I'm wondering if she's recording it in that way. Oh, this is interesting. She's like recording the most epic kills. Her conquest, perhaps? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's, whatever she's doing is, I think, beyond my, my understanding, or at least that's what I'm kind of half suspecting, half hoping. Uh, 
Because, you know, if I start to understand it, I feel I've had a number of friends that get into this sort of slide that they kind of like their job too much and yeah. oh. that causes a problem in our line of work. That's a good point. Thanks, Steve. Um, I might have missed this, but was there any other point uh, in conversation with the, with, with the queen where she took fascination in something equally uh, macabre where you're just like, yep. That tracks. <clears throat> yes, uh, I, I did see that happen once. Um, she, um, this was, uh, actually, this was uh, before a little bit before she became queen, while you were still in charge, uh, and uh, yeah, she, at one point, kind of, she at that point still apparently had an inkling of what I'd do. Uh, and uh, so she brought over um, a, uh, and uh, feel free to X this if this goes in terrible direction, but she brought over a, a dead bird uh, yeah. to me. And uh, she sort of said a few things, but she wanted, she very purposely wanted me to see it. Uh, and, you know, she was like, isn't this, isn't, you know, something like, isn't the, isn't the end of life, can't the end of life be beautiful? It looks like it's asleep. She wants yeah. to be a vampire. That's the, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. That's, that's dark, I dig it. Um, and that, that happened, and then later, thing, a couple of things like that have happened again when I've very sort of seen her see things that are dead occasionally. Um, it's been a little bit like that. When, no, I mean, the rest of the time she's fine. It's just that occasionally we get that, and it's uh, just one of those things, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, that tracks. <laughs> All right. Have you shared this kind of interesting thing that you've noticed about her, this fascination with death, with anyone, or you've kept it to yourself? God, no, I want to keep my head. <laughs> No, if, if I, if Jess had known, I'd been like, hey, you have a notice when the queen, you know, gets really fascinated by the thing, you know, the end of times. No, no one's ever seen when, that. Yeah, if people, if others have noticed and asked me about it, I have always just sort of taken the line of this is not, so, this is not a conversation we need to be having. Um, the queen is fine. The, the queen, every, everyone has their thing, and we're leaving it at that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would press or notice, actually, what is happening there. That's very interesting. Did you notice anything that, in particular that started it? I mean... Or has she kind of always had this fascination? Prior to, um, prior to that first incident with the bird, um, I don't know that I necessarily saw her, um, she was fascinated by things. She's always been fascinated by different things, uh, be it in nature, she was, she's very good at seeing the beauty in things. Um, and, and in people. Uh, and so this, oddly enough, this also tracks with that. So I feel as though she's always been this way in that sense. Uh, I, I didn't see anything related to death specifically until she brought me that bird. Does she ever have you bring back the people that you've disposed of for her? Has she ever shown that level of fascination with death? Um, gone back to the, I'm sorry, uh, gone back to do what with them? Well, uh, bring them back or kill people for her, um, you know, in her presence or things like that. Like, has she shown an unhealthy oh. fascination beyond the political nature? Oh, has she ever her? wanted to see it happening? Um... She's never asked me to see it happening. 
Um, I don't think she'd object if it happened, to be perfectly honest. Um, but she knows, she's very smart about these kinds of things, and she knows that that is m way too much of a risk for her to be present when anything that I do ha The less she knows officially, or the less she's, uh, you know, the, the, the less she can be connected to the things that I do, uh, that I have to do to keep her in the kingdom safe, uh, the, the less she knows, or rather, I keep saying the less she knows, but the less she can be connected with those things, the less she officially knows, the better off she is, and she's completely aware of that. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty satisfied with this vein of thought. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm good. Alright. No, okay, almost. Here we go. You sometimes think you might be the queen's favorite. Why, and why does this worry you? <laughs> well, you know, she just pays attention to me a lot, whether I'm in her presence or not. She's inquiring of, like, Where's Jess? What's Jess doing? To the naked eye, one might just be uh, assuming the queen is just putting the newest person on the guard through the ropes and ensuring the quality of content provided by me. And I'm just concerned that she still doesn't trust me since I was such a maniacal little child. Though I haven't actually stolen anything since then. I diverted the sneaky sneaks into more like a gestury attitude. Maybe I do sleight of hand magic. <laughs> I th when you say uh, even when you're not around, I presume that, th that this was something that was brought to your attention? I mean, I yeah, I would see one of you guys like come in and check on me or try and sneak up on me, but you can't sneak up on me. <laughs> like, why is everyone watching me? What's going on? Or he likes, I don't know, Lee's like walks up to me and is like, what you doing? And I'm like, what's it to ya? <laughs> Sneaky sneaks. Yeah, I'm concerned that she doesn't quite trust me. Do you worry something's going to happen as a result of uh, her keeping you so close? Um, I part of me enjoys the attention for sure. I want like notice me some pie, please. Um, but yeah, there might be a little a little layer of concern to be like, boo. Even if I am trustworthy, if I can't ever prove it to her, what's the going to happen to me? What type of proof has she asked of you? That's the thing. Nothing. She just keeps asking questions. Or just staring. Hmm. She hasn't just come out and said it. It'd be easier if I knew what going on here, but it's just like a hint. I stink. I can't tell if she likes me or she hates me. That's the problem. Interesting. Has it ever occurred to you that she might be testing you for something? Uh, I mean... Can't I just take it at face value and she just wants to pay attention to me? Like, what if I am actually her favorite? Good old probably, two probably shoes reasonable. over here. Alex can't handle... <laughs> this is a new person. Whatever. I might just be the favorite. Deal with it. <laughs> Current favorite. <laughs> Come on, Alex. You know I'm your favorite. <laughs> I know that you're my favorite to tolerate at a distance. <laughs> I am. Sh I imagine as a knight 
you are blessed with the genes of chalness. <laughs> and I am so in character short. And you just like put your hand on my forehead. And I'm like, but uh, love me and so hug. Come here. <laughs> for, for the sake of storytelling, yes. Yes, I will acquiesce to being much taller than you. I'd say like a good foot and a half. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're amazing. It's real fancy, being tall. <laughs> it's my it's my dream to be tall. It's my life goal. But, you know, I think blessed be the, the gods we worship and I, you know, that just would have been too powerful if I was that tall. So, use that height well, okay? But what's but what you're saying is you are a little bit made uncomfortable by being potentially the queen's favorite. Yeah. And I very much am not worried about being a favorite or not, or where I fall within the hierarchy of things, because I know I'm better than you no matter what. Mm. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. you, you got this round, okay? You got, I, I, I hear you. I'll reflect on these uh, thoughts and feelings and see if objectively I can provide proof for you that you know. <laughs> I might do a better job at my job than you. <sighs> but ultimately, we're all here to protect the queen and make sure she travels safely. Right? Mm. right? Yeah, some of, some of us are just better at that than others. Maybe I am emotional protecting her from heartbreak. <laughs> I really want to find out more about that, but I don't know if it's part of this right now. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've, as far as I'm concerned, if it's said, it's fair game to ask questions about. Uh, <laughs> Am I bluffing or am I for real? Oh, that's like a beautiful cliffhanger. Like, I want to know more, but I don't. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you can always save it for next draft, but you can always ask. Oh. I leave it up to someone else to decide if they want to dig into it. <laughs> nope. Just keep bird bopping. <laughs> I feel it's so much better just leaving it unsaid for now and then uh, and then Let waiting it for it to explode later. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this might be able to be taken out. Give me that slow burn. Yes. yes. What have I done? <laughs> so long as by the end of this game we find out how you are protecting her from heartbreak. <laughs> that is my one request. That's important. <laughs> Very important to me right now. There are cars in here that will lend itself to that. <laughs> I have no further questions. I can say that. I'm most satisfied. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yes, I'm content. Well, go ahead, Alex. Let's see the next prompt. Let's see if I can draw a card. Uh, draw. Alex versus one roll 20. You have a personal connection to the land you are currently traveling through. What makes you want to stay and why don't you? The land we are currently traveling through is by many accounts considered gloomy and wet, a bit of like a marshland, uh, constantly overcast. Um, always a bit on the cold side, even when the sun does manage to peek through the clouds, it just, it, it's a chill that sits in your bones. And this land is the land of my father and my father's people. And I want to stay, if only to get to know that part of myself a bit better. I want to stay because I know it is that part of myself that the queen is most fascinated by. But I won't because I don't know if I could come back if I stayed. I am very much afraid of my father's people and what they can do 
and what they are known for. And I was raised by my mother. I was raised in the court. And I have no real desire to leave this place that I have known, this place that I think makes me the good person that I am, because I worry that if I spend enough time around my father's people, I will become like them. And I don't think they're very good people. They are known for being powerful, but power does not necessarily equate goodness. So that's why I wish to stay, and that is why I did not. In our time traveling through this place, did you or did you not try to prolong our stay by a night or two? I did prolong our stay, but not in a devious or sneaky sort of way. I simply asked the queen if we could stay an extra night, and she acquiesced. Um, though, in part, it could be because she had hoped that I would learn more about my heritage and be able to help her in her discoveries and fascination with death. Ooh. So the queen knows your heritage, your yes. lineage, per se. She does indeed. Are you at all concerned passing through here uh, in light of your knowledge of uh, your, your father and their and uh, his people um, that passing through here might be uh, a security risk? Yes and no. They are not um, people of war or anything like that. They are um, they're known for dark magic. They're known for doing things that are considered to be impossible. Things like um, bringing back that which was once dead. And they are also known as doctors and healers. Um, and it's hard sometimes to pull apart what is science and what is magic um, with these people. Mm. And so a part of the queen, the queen wanted to come through here um, because she wanted to augment her own knowledge. And perhaps she had a task for Jim at one point, who knows, um, but she very much wanted to understand the science that they use to prolong the life of the sick, to heal those who were sick, and the mysteries around the rumors that they could bring back the recently deceased from the dead. Hmm. About uh, you, about your heritage of the people of this land, is this, is this something that one could tell by looking at you, or is it more that people know who your father is and that's how uh other people know of your uh ties to this place people know where um in general the idea of where my father is from but no one knows specifically who he is except for my mother and the queen um my mother wasn't someone important enough she cooked in the kitchen um hmm. and it simply just you know, she wasn't of a rank where it would have been notable gossip. It didn't really become notable until the queen um, took me in after my mother died. So looking back um, and given her recent fascination with death, it does make me reconsider why she brought me in and how she raised me to be. Hmm. And why she keeps asking me to touch dead things. <laughs> just, just poke it. <laughs> <laughs> to the royal court was your mother like civilly and officially separated from your father yeah they were never wed it was a tryst a passing caravan and you know in the way that people do nine months later hello babu <laughs> do we does anyone suspect here, perhaps the queen loved your mother? Mm. Perhaps. It's something I never asked her. It's something I never thought about. Maybe it's something someone who deals more in secrets would know more about. Interesting. By any chance, do you think perhaps you happen to know any dead people? Or have you? 
Not in the traditional sense. I think you take my meaning. Mm. Not to my knowledge, uh, though the rumors about the land we pass through, if they are true, would mean that there are those among us um, who perhaps were once dead and now live again. They say that you can tell by looking at the eyes. I only ever offer you a singular eye to look at at any given point. <laughs> <laughs> can no bitch if you all see one eye? <laughs> and just to put a name to what we've been dancing around, the rumor is that necromancers are here. What? But in that way where science and magic blur in a land of queens and kings, they could just be very talented healers. Or a lot of uh, mistaken bodies in F awake. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Or just very enthusiastic thanatologists. No, wait. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Lee, how do you feel about necromancy? Uh, no. Uh, I think I I think I am going to have to step in. I think only Alex is supposed to answer. Questions oh right right, right, right. Sorry, I yeah. just get sorry. sorry. I'm curious. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> well, I if Jim, if you're okay, I would be happy to acquiesce because if this is opening up excitement for others, I'd be happy to hear other people's perspectives. I don't want to derail the game though. Uh, I mean, if if uh, if you want to volunteer your opinion on necromancy, that's cool. I, I think it's it's uh, perfectly. We can do what we can do whatever we want, really. Um, so, yeah, Alex, how do you feel about necromancy? Jeez. Al Alex has a habit of dropping words and then just like fading into the bushes. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think it is a corrupt art, and if the dark arts do exist, then um, there is nothing good about them, and it greatly pains me to think that that might be something that is part of me. Aww. I, when the queen proposes or says that we're going to stay an extra night here, I'm just like, mm, but what if we did it? <laughs> This place is that weird kind of damp where you go outside and suddenly every part of you is moist and you don't know what happened. It's, it's that. It's like, it's, it's a Seattle uh, winter where it's just mist everywhere. I'm Xing the M word. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> no, it's okay, that's good. Um, you step out and you're wet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one's worse. Um, ooh, so like, I'm willing to stay here if the amount of humidity in the air implies that they're at least good at fermenting some juices. A land known for death is definitely going to be really good at fermenting things. Okay. I'll order a flight of things and taste them all. It'll be fine. Do you no don't live further questions. in a cold, wet place without good liquor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm good on my turn, okay. unless there are more questions. I'm tempted to so many other questions, but I'm going to be... <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm good, actually. I'm good. <laughs> All right, so it's over to Lee. What do you do that pleases the queen on this journey? Um, I think, as one of her attendants, I... I'm pretty good at anticipating things that she wants before she realizes she wants them. Um, on this journey in particular, I think I would have tried to help her talk to people and find more information about um, what they have going on. So when he, uh, when you say, like, assistance and talk to people or such, uh, are there moments where the, uh, queen is 
particularly awkward where you're like, at this point I should uh, step in and save face to some extent. Ooh, no, I think she's better at that than me. And if she seems a little bit awkward, I would probably find a way to just be like, oh no, I'm the awkward one, like. Ah. So she looks for you. Nice. She looks to you to aid in social connections. Is that? Am I getting the picture right here? Uh, some of it's social. Some of it's just retrieving things. I see. Cool. What sort of uh, people has she had you talking to? Some of the healers. Or that's what I've heard them call. Oh, shit. And what did you make of the healers when you met them? I think they have some closely guarded secrets that she wants to know, but they aren't necessarily going to tell her. Do you believe the rumors about this place? Yes. How did you get along with the healers when you went out to uh, to, to go and get one? <laughs> um, good. I think uh, at some point I was sick and for a minute they thought I was going to pass and they stopped. So I'm okay with them. Did you see the light at the end of the tunnel? I don't talk about the experience. Fair. Fair, fair enough. Did, did you get sick on the journey or was it a sudden sickness that overcame you? Uh, I was sick before, so I knew them from before. Do you seem extra impervious to sicknesses now? Uh, I would say I haven't appeared to be very sick in a long time. Nice. Hmm. Were any of the people you talked to ones that you knew from your um, prior sickness and dealings with the healers? Yes, I specifically searched them out. What do they think of the Queen's inquiry into their arts? I think they are a little bit wary that uh, she might be going after powers that they don't want to share. Do you think you've come away from any of this with a greater understanding of how all that works? Yes, I think I've definitely been asking some questions about the process and about how they would heal somebody in certain circumstances. Not the full extent. I know there's something they're holding back, some like key information. So I can't like complete it myself. But I've got some information on it. On another note, because you are so useful to the queen, what do those errands feel like to you? 
Like, do you feel a sense of accomplishment or do they feel tedious? Oh no, definitely a sense of accomplishment. It's good to get that done. She's busy. Okay. I think I'm good. Yes, I have no further questions. All right. So, uh, what did you bring with you that endangers the queen? Yikes. I think... I think it's my history. Uh, the queen's mother wasn't too well regarded in at least these lands. And so my associate... My association more so than uh, the queen being her daughter uh, is what endangers uh, endangers her on this journey. No question, but I really like that. Like my default mind is like physical objects, weapon. Yeah. That was. That yeah, was that, that, that's usually where my, my where my would go, but I can't really think of anything so. Yeah. Gotta look abstract with it. Yeah. I think for a second, just this is a minor technical thing that cut out. So there was, uh, what was the, what was the thing that you, that you said you brought? Oh, I uh, just my history as, uh, Someone who was an advisor to the previous queen. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Was there anything during that time that uh, you did that might, in particular, throw this, uh, throw, throw our current queen or the or the journey into uh, into danger? Was there a particular instance that where we go, where we might about to, we we people might fear we'd be about to see history repeat itself? Um. It is possible that I don't uh, regard, I don't hold this peop this, these people's culture in high regard, especially uh, with rumors of, of their practices. So I may have uh, let uh, some insults slip uh, during uh, some negotiations. Damn it! just all that alcohol that you've had. Yeah. We can excuse this. Say, say what you will about these people. This is good stuff. Have you, um, given your history, have you encountered anyone here that knew you from the previous uh, court? I think at, the, at least up to this point, it's been multi mostly through... Uh, smaller towns towards uh, the, like, we haven't ran to any uh, cities, uh, though if we would, that then it would likely be the case, but at this point, uh, no one who would uh, recognize at least me as an individual, though likely of uh, just the core of, the, of our nation. And so that may have affected uh, our nation's uh, reputation with these people, but no one that would recognize uh, me particularly. Have you... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, have... <laughs> have you heard... You're killing me, Jim. Have you heard any sentiments about the new queen? Um as it relates to the previous ruler? Um, possibly, perhaps if we uh, stopped uh, in some inn, I may have overheard uh, people more particularly talking about uh, hoping that she is different from the previous queen. I have a question. 
Um, when you, um, first of all, just a clarification. Uh, the insult that you spoke, uh, was that on this trip or was that a thing that happened in the past? Or is that, or is the answer to that both? Uh, in the past and that, and the, uh, consequences of that have let me to, have let me to, uh, keep tighter lips, uh, during this trip. Okay, so, so you, you've, you've been... It, people might be worried it'll happen this trip, but it's uh, it hasn't it has not happened. Yes, it is a concern, uh, possibly for all of us. And the previous trip was that, uh, or the previous trip, the previous time when that happened, uh, that was under the that was under the the uh, previous queen, perhaps, or was that one during your regency? Um, it was likely. Uh, it was likely during the uh, previous queen's uh, rule. Okay. Um, so, that being the case, what I kind of am wondering is, is there... And I understand the, 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 the reasons you've given thus far, but I'm kind of wondering if there's any reason or impression why you were willing to make yourself a target at that time and not now, and if that has anything to do with your relative desire to protect either of the two monarchs in question. I think uh, the consequences of saying it first time weren't apparent to me. I was much younger. Uh, and so now that I know what that can do, uh, it is now something that I look out for in myself. Are you worried now that the consequences would be worse? Uh, I acknowledge it as a possibility, but do not think that making it worse is likely. It just kind of, uh resurrects uh, the older prejudices. <laughs> complete, complete coincidence. No further questions, Your Honor. Alright. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. I believe that's to me, then. And I will go ahead and do this. There is someone else in this retinue you love besides the queen. How and why are you keeping it a secret? Okay. Uh, I there live are for so drama. I know, right? Um. There are several different ways this could go. So, if folks don't mind, I'm actually going to roll a die now. <laughs> <laughs> One day four, oh. go. You can't right. make you can't make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many ways this could go. I am seeing too many possibilities. There are but four ways this could go, Jim. <laughs> or, or no, five. Five ways. I mean, you could invent someone uh, new, or you could just love yourself. I mean, I, I, you could love the queen. That's true. You could love the queen. Well, no, that's the, the, that's in the premise. We all love the queen. Oh, well, yes, yes. Um, but, uh, well, here we go. Okay. So, um... In spite of our, uh, in spite of our various relative disagreements, I do uh, love the first night. Uh, Is the knight the aware of this? <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think that. I think that they hate me. So n no, I haven't said a single word about it. 
Um, it's it's because in part there I have a great concern for them because they're well. The the well, it, it's I, I actually well I have a, I have a great concern for more that uh, as as someone who is trying to be very much in the open and uh, kind of as far as um, the attention of the uh, of the queen goes um, I think a part of me suspects it would it it's kind of it could be a bit dangerous, given uh, uh, her uh, her interests uh, that she's shown, which is why, in a way, I'm kind of grateful that uh, Jess's character is there, um, because it means that the queen will not hyper-focus in this way, and I don't have to go to work on anyone we know. I, uh, <laughs> that, that aside also, it's just, I, I think I very much admire, um, the, the Knight's principles. And I think that if there is anything at all that has a chance of being pure in this world, it's them. Yo. <laughs> uh, at least trying to. <laughs> now, Jim, let me get this straight. You kill for the queen. You are for every counts and purposes described as ugly does that do those two give what what sort of complex does that give you do you double down and present with bravado or do you stay in the shadows i think i mostly stay in the shadows and i just tend not to care what anybody thinks uh for the most part um most people um <laughs> Most people. Oh God! Oh, no. uh, feel free to X this if you need to. Uh, most people are just as at, at this point in my life, having done this as long as I have. Most people are future meat, uh, so it's really just a question of it's it's not a question of will they die. It's a question of when. Oh. Uh, so yeah. I. I I think that, if anything, I uh, I feel sorry for them, and uh, but at the same time, I just you know, I don't really I don't really feel a need to throw myself out there, and that would be kind of I think counterproductive to my job if I did. Hmm. If someone asks you, are you interested in anyone? Hypothetically, would you answer them? I think I'd answer that. Um, let's see. In my uh, in my capacity as uh, as um, one of the royal advisors, um, I'd answer that I'm interested in everyone. Uh, because, you know, who knows what people are up to. In my capacity as uh, just myself, uh, or, or <laughs> in doing, as the one who does the job that I do, should anyone who speaks to me that knows about it speak to me, I would say, I'm interested in their money. No, Jim, no, 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 no. Look, look, we, for all we know, we could be traveling to our deaths, sacrificing ourselves for the greater good and the queen, okay? This is about love. You gotta tell me you have no one you want to confess to. Mm. 
Maybe I it's not my business. I haven't, yes. Conf yes. I haven't confessed anything, but I think Lee's character suspects something. <laughs> Is it like, have I seen lingering looks or anything? What, what makes it suspicious? I think if people get me into, into into drinking or get at least to get talk to me for a while and uh, get me talking, I will uh, often freely give my opinions about uh, pretty much anyone and everything. Not in a boisterous manner, but you know, it's like you get me talking and I will. Except the night. I don't typically say one thing or the other about them. Is the love that you feel for the knight um, similar to how we love the queen, sort of that respect and awe? Or is it more of a um, emotional, um, intimate kind of love? I don't think I've fully examined that. Um, there are times for me when it's... Uh, there are times for me when it's it's the one, the uh, the same sort of love that I have for the queen. Um, although, yeah, I've known the queen for a very long time, too. Um, uh, I've, you know, I've known her since she was much younger. Um, and so there's that kind of affection there. Um... And I guess if uh, if I'm recalling correctly, if the knight has served the uh, queen, this, this queen since also being very young, I've probably known the knight for that long too. And so there, it is a very similar thing to that, I would think. Although I probably didn't don't know the knight nearly as well in that respect, at least you know growing up. I think maybe there are times when I let myself think for too long that sometimes, you know, the mind wanders and you think you know, like, is it more emotional? Is there something more there? But I try to usually not think about that, and this is why I'm very glad there is alcohol. This is why I'm glad we're traveling through the land we're traveling through, because they make awesome stuff. <laughs> and I'm very glad we have ready access to it. <laughs> Poor Jim has seen so much, and has said so little. <laughs> Branding! No, wait, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm not calling you out or anything. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love the concept of love. Okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm satisfied. <laughs> I yes. Okay, if we are good, um, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a quick break um, as we. Uh, as, as we realign our various um, uh, planetary chakras in connection with the, uh, the song of the universe um, and uh, various other things that need be done. Um, and so we'll see. We'll be back in like five, ten minutes. Uh, we will see you shortly.
focus on the future meat. <laughs> I am focusing now on the future meat, and we have indeed returned. Um, so <laughs> we <laughs> now that now. <laughs> Now that the future meet is before me, I can remember now that, uh, uh... Why am I this bad at transitions? It's Jess's turn. Would you like to go? <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is my turn, indeed. Let's pull a prop. Blame Alex. Long enough to know that this is how we do. Yeah, this is how this works. <laughs> I got some news for you, folks. It doesn't get better. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> oh. You were summoned to a private meeting with the queen once. Why did you feel disappointed afterwards? <laughs> oh, boy. There was a masochistic part of me that was like completely convinced that this summoning was to like berate me and tell me exactly what I've been doing wrong or how she didn't trust me and then she just asked me about the new potential royal guard garbs whether I wanted dark blue or purple uh, and you know, I was really looking for some substance in this private conversation, but she just wanted objective opinions instead of a round table. And I was like, okay. Okay. I picked blue. That's good to know. <laughs> Blue's a very good color. Was there anything wrong with the blue? Were there... <laughs> No, I just felt that the royal purple was just, you know, too cliche. And the blue had, like, flecks of turquoise amidst the dark navy. So I was like, that one. And besides, I brought out the color of my eyes. Were you aware at all of the, uh, the colors of the heraldry in the countries we're traveling through? And do you feel that that has factored at all into the decision that you made? Ooh. Dress Jess wants to say yes. In character dress, probably no. <laughs> like, I could play it off. Like, if someone was like, Did you know the country of Wittensburg? They're, they're orange. So now you're choosing the complementary color. And I'm like, Yes. I'm just wondering how, but well, I'm just wondering how you, you're going to feel about it when we eventually meet with this foreign power and if there is any conflict, just perhaps, just even a social one mm. over the fact that the queen is wearing colors that might be considered insulting. Ooh, very interesting. So I didn't grow up in the royal courts. I don't think I would know of the faux pas and the ins and outs quite as well as some of you other very capable folk. I just picked it because it was pretty. <laughs> So, uh, with the beginning of uh, your answer to the prompts, uh, you were hoping that. So you were hoping that she would bray you, bray you at least so that you would just that you would know. Yes. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I am the kind of person where curiosity will drive me insane. Like if I had an answer one way or another, I would not have so much annoying energy mostly directed towards the night occasionally jim sometimes lee but i mean let's be real you all get a little front of like yeah. <laughs> all right yeah i have no further questions 
did you do anything in particular that you thought she would want to talk to you about? Um, well, sometimes I may drink a little too much. Lips might get a little too loose. I may have let out not a big one, just a teeny secret. Maybe like no one knows which path we're going to the city. So I might have told them like the next town we were heading in. But I had no idea who they were. So she could have been peeved that I let maybe mundane, maybe not mundane, information go through. just wanted her to notice me. <laughs> Do you think the queen doesn't take you seriously? I think I would be terrified if the queen took me seriously. I mean, fair. I'm I'm good with my turn unless Okay. All right, then I shall go. What is something you do for the royal family that has prepared you well for this journey? Um, My very existence! <laughs> A part of me just wants to let the garbled sound of Jess be the answer to this question. <laughs> I feel like this question is just so on the nose for you. Almost something you What? You are the royal family. You lived this life the whole month. But. I, 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 no, no, do not, do not. Our rivalry is deep. Um, and your cattiness is known and ignored by the knight. Because the knight is better than this. I hate that you know when I'm so irritated. The knight can feel you, like, you know, staring daggers into their back and is like, whatever. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that I do for the queen is compete in tournaments. Um, and I have the moniker of the queen's beast because I win. Um, and maybe it's something supernatural, could just be because I am tall and broad and strong, but I have defeated um, knights. I have defeated um, creatures. And in these tournaments, be it sword or joust, I have always come out on top. And it has done a lot to garner respect um, for those who respect that sort of power as the queen um, comes into her own power and moves through the kingdom on this journey. Um, so I get accolades by playing by the rules, unlike some people. Would you say you flaunt this big top energy? Not at all, but I won't say that I hide it from you, especially. I see, I see, yes. All right. No further questions. you're a competitive person. So these tournaments, what would you say is your kill ratio? In other words, the, you know, the, the ones you end up killing versus the ones that you just defeat. For the most part, it is all considered defeat. If someone is injured and happens to die of that injury, um, it is not something that weighs on my conscience because it is by their own lack of skill that they were unable to stand their ground or hold their own in such a high profile tournament. We all stepped into it knowing that we might die. Does that happen a lot? Mm, not, in a, not in any uh, 
fashion that one would consider unusual, though perhaps it does happen more when people fight me than I might be aware of. Um, it's not like they're checking pulses if someone gets knocked down and carried out of the ring. Are you saying you're not emotionally bloodthirsty, but objectively your skills are that good? Objectively stating that if someone gets hit with a very large wooden stick in the middle of their chest and it happens to crush their sternum. Wooden stick. How many people have you staked? <laughs> Again with the staking? <laughs> I have staked none. How um, many people had fangs? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to say that at some point there is a game that children in the court play called who is a vampire <laughs> and that for whatever reason you have grown up obsessed with the fact that vampires may or may not be real and continue to play this game in an unhealthy way <laughs> i'm absolutely a conspiratorialist for vampires um, it was a formative part of my childhood okay and it's part of the reasons why I do not respect you, because you carry childish things with you well into your adult years. <laughs> <laughs> One might say children are the purest form of morality and creativity, so the fact that I cling to childhood is so hard. What does that say about me? <sighs> That's what it says. It says that you are annoying and need to stop clinging to the <laughs> skirts like a little child. But I picked out the colors. And have you felt the fabric? It's not just any velvet, okay? No, because I keep my hands to myself. <sighs> any other questions? You want to and can't be courageous enough. <laughs> so, I, I have kind of a follow-up question. Uh, and vampires aside, I'm, I'm not supposed to talk about the vampires. Uh, do, um... Uh, it, it, so, uh, this, um... Reputation as the, the beast. means beast. Um... Uh, this strikes me as somewhat isolating, uh, to a certain extent, um, and uh, I, I'm wondering if being known that way, and probably something that is said both in uh, admiration and probably derision uh, by some, uh, does that trouble you at all? None the slightest. Uh, what I do is a noble thing. It is noble to compete in these tournaments, and it is um, a mark of high honor to win. Um, because I win uh, accolades for my queen and my court. You gonna fight anybody when we get there? Pardon? Are you going to fight anybody when we get to the end of our trip? Hmm. Perhaps if the queen decides to um, enter in the court in in the uh, tournament, enter the court in the tournament. Um, if there is one happening by the time we get there. Uh, it wasn't the objective of us going, but, you know, uh, diplomacy takes many forms. Has the Queen ever used you to settle diplomatic incidents before? Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, fighting? In, yes, in this manner, yes. Uh, yes, I have served as a general at times. I have served um, as first knight, leading others into battle and into fights. Um, but, you know, our queen is wise and noble, and she would not send us forth without good reason. But uh, um, ever uh, in a contest, like the jousting or uh, sword fight, that manner of thing? Personal killings. <coughs> no, that's, I, that's not their job. <laughs> <laughs> that is someone else's job. The, the sneaky killings. Whose yeah. job? What? I don't know. <laughs> um, there, I mean, you know, I have killed people. It's 
a byproduct of being in a court and being one that carries a sword or a weapon of any sort, you will kill for the court. Um, when you serve as a bodyguard, you will kill to protect your queen. Um, but yeah, she has entered me in tournaments sometimes to show power, to show that she commands um, those who, you know, wield great physical power. And then she has her viziers who wield great mental power. So she is not weak. Um, and she surrounds herself with those that are strong, that she may be stronger. My turn? Yep. Ooh, Ooh. What do you do to disappoint the queen on this journey? Oh no. <laughs> you went from the highest high. Um, I think not finding that last bit of information um, I think she needed that as a bargaining chip where we're going. Mm. Has she asked you to do anything to make up for that? I don't think there was time we had that only that one extra day on our journey so i don't think there was time to make up for my failing are you worried that it's a significant mess up like this is like quote um, so to speak knocked you down a notch in the queen's eyes or definitely worried about that Ew. I don't think I think this is the biggest in my eyes the biggest mistake I've made how do you handle that disappointment are you trying to be extra apologetic or trying to do extra favors? Like, sh if she hasn't told you to fix it, how, how are you trying to fix it? I think by trying to see if there's any other information or bargaining chips, listening when everybody's drinking, trying to see if there's something else that I can do that would save this. Maybe that even contributed to that rumor that Ooh. I was up to something shady. Right. With the best of intentions. I like it. Yeah, I don't think I have any questions. Uh, are we good to continue? Mm -hmm. All right. When was the last time the queen showed you real kindness? Hmm. I think, uh, <clears throat> I think after the uh, major argument, uh, uh, when I spoke out of turn, and she uh, said uh, that she doesn't need, that she didn't need me anymore. She apologized, and, and she apologized for that, and that uh, her, her judgment was was blinded by frustration. And uh, I could tell that uh, that's when she was being, uh, in the moment she was she was being sincere.
did she take you aside to apologize or did she do it where other people would hear that? Um, I think it was more uh, later in the day when uh, living room, it was definitely more of a um, pulled the side uh, situation. It wasn't a public thing. Do you think anyone else in the retinue might know or suspect that apology took place? Um, like the argument, like the argument itself, uh, it's very possible that any of you could have overheard it, but I don't think anyone in particular was inclined to uh, be there. Maybe the knight as her personal guard, but even then, uh. I don't. Do you verbally and emotionally accept the apology, and how does the apology interaction make you feel? I think... I think it shows that uh, the uh, that the fact that she was um, blinded by frustration means that she has, she still has a few things to learn, and that regardless if she meant that she needed me or not, that uh, she that she would have been wrong. Is our is our queen? Uh, known for apologizing or showing these kind of acts of sincerity or is this unusual? This is a uh, fairly rare occurrence, like especially uh, publicly uh, but as well as privately. Why are some others at the royal court jealous of your relationship with the queen? I think I would like to hear Jess's answer to this question. Oh no, why me? <laughs> yeah. Now you can also exit or pass it if you so desire. <laughs> As I think this is the first time we've had a pass question. I just no, that's a good move. I, I accept this. Um... Why are some others at the royal court, not necessarily here, Dallas? I think our society is quite economically sound and hierarchical, so money speaks. And the fact that I wasn't in a royal family, that I wasn't born into this, that I don't necessarily have money. They're like, well, why? Why is she in the personal guard? Why do they get to hang out with the queen? Why does the queen trust her? What sort of merits? And I haven't provided. I have not shown anyone explicitly what merits I do offer to the queen. So yeah, I let them swirl and stew in their jealousy. I let it. I moisturize my face with it on a daily basis. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jim. I hope you're having a good time over there. I, such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> this is me, guys. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I dig it. Do you worry at all at any point that perhaps there will be, be that this attitude may um, result uh, on others' part may uh, eventually result in a threat to your safety? Um, 
let's just say that I put on such a comical jester visage to mask any qualms I have about my position and my safety. But I'm also hyper aware. Nobody's sneaking up on this. Constant vigilance, as one Mad Eye Moody would have said. I forget which one said it. Sorry. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> so many in history. Well, there, there were at least two. Um, <laughs> No, it's, I, I think that I there was something else I wanted to, to ask related to this to tie it, but I was, I was thinking about trying to tie it back into the... Yeah, um... So, I think early on we, we talked about the, the difference between what you publicly do for the Queen and the uh, your, your quote-unquote real job. Um, and, um... What I kind of wonder is then... If um, so, it, and and from your, your most recent answer, it seems as though you you feel as though your facade is is uh, pretty good, uh, and so folks might not suspect what's uh, actually going on. Um, however, um, do you think anyone? Has there been anyone, uh, if, you know, given that folks shouldn't know what your uh, what your true job is, has anyone, uh, you know, do you think there's been anyone coming up seeking that position? <laughs> um, okay, so rephrasing that question, are you mm. asking if there is someone who questions my validity in my position? <laughs> Or if someone is looking to seek my true job? Uh, I think more the latter than the former. Okay. Um, that's almost a question I would pose to you guys. I, I genuinely... I, I don't know. I think the queen hired me on in such an isolated manner. It was a very direct summons. Mm -hmm. It wasn't through like a public interview or anything. So right, it's like right. kind of this weird black sheep situation. Yeah. What does she even do, Bob? I could do her job. I'm sure I could. And actually, let me further turn that around. I'm sorry I keep, you know, no, adding more. I keep, sorry I keep adding more train cars onto the, yeah. uh, onto the end of the train. Uh, but, uh, do you ever, are you ever concerned that she's going to find someone else to do what you do if, uh, if she doesn't, if, if as perhaps you suspect, perhaps, that she's not taking you as seriously as you would like? Oh, plot twist. That's a, that's a more pointed question. I like yeah. this question. Took me a while to get there. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> no, that's okay. We got there and my very specific answer to that is no, Jim. I'm not afraid that she can replace me. At least not yet. Damn it, I found another car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually just more specific. Um, how, uh, how long ago did she ask you, how long has it been since she asked you to do your real job? When do you say, when do you think the last physical scuffle we would have had to deal with, or have we confronted anyone along the road would be? Has it been a while? Yeah, you're, you're free to say, it's your turn. Okay, 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 gosh, gotta be decisive. Yes, it's been a while and there's a reason for that. So to more directly answer your question, it's a constant assignment. I'm always working, Jim! 
<laughs> takes the other shot. I'm always working. I'm never not working. <laughs> Great. I, I, I'm, I'm a bucket of mysteries. How's that, Alex? <laughs> a mystery wrapped in an enigma wrapped in a taco. <laughs> why does... Why do they get under my skin so easily? It's because I'm so much taller than you. It just makes it easier to look down <laughs> on the interior. You may or may not have a valid answer in that. Any further questions? Uh, now, since you pass that card along to me, now it goes to Alex? Yep. Okay. That would make sense. All right. Oof. When did you know you would never forgive the queen and why? Um, I am actually going to pass on this because I don't think it would fit for me to never forgive the queen. I think I would forgive the queen most anything. <laughs> so are you are you exiting it or are you passing it to Lee? I'm passing it to Lee. You've been getting the fun ones lately, Lee, so you know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I can answer this one either. Is it okay for me to pass it as well? Yeah, absolutely. You can. We, we, we can make a complete circuit if you, uh, of it if you so desire. Difficult. <laughs> or you can exit, either way. Yeah. I'll pass it. Yeah, I think that... Um, I, I think I have a possible answer. Uh, tying into the previous turn, uh, in that... Uh, when she apologized, I accepted it, but I knew that she will never actually learn. I think that... Like, uh, this is... There will always be moments where uh, she will lash out, and so there's uh, every reason to suspect that uh, that may happen again. So do you, do you think our queen is uh, duplicitous or two-faced or? It's more so that she doesn't understand just how emotional she can, she can get sometimes. It's not out of dishonesty, it's just out of uh, a blind spot of self-awareness. I was trying not to uh, ask any questions since I hogged so many questions last time. <laughs> but something has occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're never going uh, so so you're never going to forgive her. Do you feel as though there's something you want to do about it? Not yet. Do we know that you're harboring this I think because I don't want to Im I'm uh, reluctant to admit it I uh, try to avoid giving too much of a, too much of a tell checks out I 
I kind of want to know what your tipping point is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I am also curious. If... if we were to get ambushed right this second. No. I wouldn't, I'm not going to pose the question. Uh, That's a very specific question. But. Oh. Oh no. Would you. Uh, would you help the queen actively? At this point. Uh, I do not consider that I do not see any reason not to. Okay. If the election was held today. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'm good. Alright. I shall go. What promise did the queen make to you before this journey? And do you think she'll keep it? Okay. I think the promise that uh, she made to me before this journey was that after it's done I will never have to kill anyone for her again. The thing that scares me is I think she will keep it and I'm not entirely certain how. <laughs> Shit. But thus far the implication has been that at that point I shall be semi-retired and it's like a I, contract. Yeah, I guess doing more of the job that I appear to do? I don't know. It's very strange. <laughs> Did she offer you this promise unprompted of her own volition or was that something you requested of her? I didn't ask for it, um, but I mean, I know that I am getting a little older, I'm getting a little slower, and uh, I'm still, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still damn good at what I do, uh, but I think, yeah, I, I, no, she, she came to me with it. And, yeah, I think that she just, again, maybe she sensed something about how that maybe even though I try to conceal it that I'm a little uncomfortable with her fascination with uh, what I do. Um, and I felt like she wanted me to keep, she wants me to keep doing it. I don't know, maybe it's a test. Mm. Maybe she wants to see if I'm going to keep doing it afterward. I'm not sure. Is it a but actually moment? <laughs> it's be. a layered question promise. Oh dear. No, I'm not sure if she'll keep it. Maybe? Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay either way, but I guess, but... Yeah. Uh. Does the promise come with... She's relieving you of any royal duties? Or do you think there is a place for you in the royal court? She told me she wants to keep me on as an advisor. Um, she seems to think there's stuff that I'm going to have to do. Yeah, I mean, I'm only an advisor in quotes right now, so, I, I mean, 
it's uh, it is a little bit odd, but I, I, I we've we've talked about it a little bit. Apparently, I'm getting like uh, I'm getting a villa or something. Um, this is apparently a very important mission that I'm going to be doing soon. So there will probably, whenever we're finished doing what we're doing, um, uh, there will be perhaps less reason for my skills to be put to use. Are you doing anything in particular to prepare for this? Oh, yes. Oh, wait a minute. Do you mean the for the mission or for the uh, or for semi-retirement? <laughs> <laughs> for for semi-retirement, um, since you're an advisor as a cover, do you feel like you already know enough about the politics and everything to have that be an actual role? Or is that something that you need to learn more about? Uh, I think I'm fine as long as it's for her. Um, because what I'm kind of an advisor on, my specialty, as it were, is that I know people and I know what people are like. And I kind of can predict what people are going to do. Um, and, uh, I, I am, I am very much a student of the, of the human beast, as it were. Uh, and, uh, so I, uh, I think that that's, and apparently she does value that insight that I have, so I guess it's just going to be more of that. Um, <laughs> if... If something were to happen and we were to get another monarch, I don't see that happening in my lifetime, but if that were to happen, uh, then um, I'd probably be screwed. <laughs> so you don't have an insurance policy set up for yourself? Oh, well, I never said that. <laughs> I dig it. I'm good. Oh, I say that <laughs> it's like it's my turn. <laughs> oh man, what brings out the queen's kindness? I'm not going to stoke the fires this turn, and I would like to pass this card. I guess that means I'm up. <laughs> what brings out the queen's kindness? Uh... The Queen's kindness is brought out by the Broken Ones, the ones she sees as forgotten or cast off by society or the court, the ones perhaps that are maybe left behind or the ones that would not be loved by the, the people. And she brings them into her orbit and she sees the potential in them and she gives them room to be their best and truest selves. And in that she is a great person, though maybe not the greatest ruler. I feel called out by this tweet and I don't like it. <laughs> not every song is about you. <laughs> Would you say you've seen it personally that the queen has, has taken 
someone under their wing or, you know, provided a kindness that she never needed to as per the job description. I say I would have felt it personally. Um, for, you know, when my mother died, I would have just become another orphan running around the kitchens. Um, and perhaps it was the interest in my father, perhaps it was her interest in my mother, but she saw in me the potential to be something more than just another child helping in the kitchen. And she brought me closer into the court and gave me an education and opportunity that normally I would not have had. And in that, I do see perhaps why some of the other people in the court might not be bad people, though their actions might be bad. See, it's not all about you. I stand corrected. <laughs> But, but what this does mean is there's common ground. You know, I took a step up and you took a step down and now we're seeing eye to eye. Yeah, well, sometimes I'll crouch down to your level. Oh. Snake to my heart. <laughs> hey, we're all on the same level when we're sitting at the table drinking in a pub. Uh, not true, I have a short torso. <laughs> killing me, Smalls, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh that's a good prompt do you think that seeing these broken people that the queen extends kindness to do you feel compelled to or not even compelled is the wrong word uh, do you feel the either the impetus or the or does it just occur to you to want to this is I, I can't think of a way to say this that, that isn't horrible I don't mean it this horribly oh no uh, say it I'll them. I gotta <laughs> do you feel a need to repair them any of them no um, I do feel a need to protect, as I would protect anyone in the Queen's retinue, but particularly the ones that she has taken a special interest in, regardless of my own personal feelings. Um, the position I hold is more important than that. Alex protects with two C's. <laughs> Capital P protects. <laughs> they protect, but they also attack. Exactly. Yeah. Any other questions? I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. No further questions. And my turn is satisfied. What do you usually do for the royal family? Why does that make you an unlikely choice for this journey? <laughs> I'm actually gonna pass. I just, I'm like drawing a blank, sorry. It's okay. I mean, if you don't wanna pass, you can we can work through it, but if you want to generally pass, like, it's not in your character. Also, if you feel as though everyone's answered this already to the extent that we, you can also exit if you want another question. Um, but it, uh, either way, you can, you can pass it along or you can exit. Well, I think, okay. I think I just don't view myself as super important for this journey. Hmm. I think I take care of the normal little things. And so I myself am not really sure why. And I think other people see that and aren't sure why I'm on this journey. Hmm. 
So do you view your, you view yourself as unimportant? It's not that anyone has said that you're not important or the queen hasn't said anything like that. I don't think anybody's directly said it. You feel in the hot glares that may or may not be there. Yeah. <laughs> Especially after my uh, mistake. Do you want to be assigned a more bravado mission? Or in reworded, what defines importance to you? I think because I don't physically protect and I don't weigh in as often on things that I don't feel as important. I feel like while we were in the town of necromancy the night after you messed up i you you probably would have found jess at a bar and <laughs> like machine can't run if it's not maintained and well oiled do you know that what even is a machine <laughs> oiling that's important maintenance is important What would it take for you to feel a part of the team worthwhile? I think I just haven't made that. I've done all the little stuff, but I haven't made that one real contribution to be like, okay, now I get it. And so I'm kind of questioning why she brought me here and I haven't been able to do anything. Why am I here? So you need authorship on something that is resoundedly a Lee experience. Okay. I got you. Are we okay to continue? Yeah. All right, yes. The queen lights a fire in you. Where is it? Jim, I'd like to hear your answer to this question. Whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> The queen lights fire in you, what is it? Um, <clears throat> I think the thing is that deep down, um, there is a part of me that does not disagree with her about there being beauty in what I do. And... This sounds terrible, but she inspires me to continue doing my job. She inspires me to do it better. She inspires me to kill more people. <laughs> I follow that logic. There is something about the way, uh, just the fact that she takes the rather uh, uh, unusual level of delight in it that she does. That also, it, it uh, the thing is, 
One of the things that I love about her is just how much delight she takes in things in the world that she's interested in. And so that just transfers, that, that continues, that... Uh, the fact that she... And she's not always just focused on the killing, but the fact that it pleases her so much when I do it, I do want to... I mean, I've known her forever. I want to make her happy, and... It just makes it worth getting up in the morning and sharpening my daggers. <laughs> so would you say these killings at this point are more valuable emotionally to you and for that endorphin high than the money that you are compensated? I wouldn't admit it, but uh, it's yes, that is the truth. That she inspires such uh, violence in you, do you think she is a bloodthirsty queen or that you are the instrument of her uh, aggression? I am hoping that I am the, the... Chicken or the egg, Jim? I am hoping that I am the instrument of her divine will. <laughs> yes! I am hoping that. There is also a part of me that is perhaps concerned that I might be the other. So I lean into the idea a little more in my head that I'm doing what's right. Have you ever hesitated to carry out her orders? Once, I, um, I had to kill somebody uh, who was related to me, and um, I was rather attached to this person. Um, Damn it, I wish I I, I, I I thought of a better answer right after I started talking, but I won't go there. Um, no, I, no, it, it doesn't make sense. All right, I'm back. Hi. Um, yes, there was a time when I did hesitate um, uh, because I was uh, asked to... Um, I was asked to kill my, uh, my brother... And, um... Not your twin brother, Tim. No, no. It's no, no, Tim's fine. Um, it's, uh... I had to kill our younger brother. And, um... Tiny Tim. No, no, it's... They're, they're not all called Tim. <laughs> but, uh, he, he wasn't that young, but... Uh, there was... He's our half brother, and there was a question of there was a question of succession involved, unfortunately, in uh, someone that might have been uh, his uh, his other uh, parent, and uh, so it had to be done, and um, it was done. How long ago was that? That was a while ago. Um, I want to say it, that was that was a few years ago. That that this took place, and um, since then I realized I was. It it is all part of a, a greater, a greater good that she is doing. And I, I must have been wrong to hesitate. I must have been, right? I must have been.
Any further questions? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna sit on that truth bomb. <laughs> My heart is being squeezed slowly. Painfully. Okay, okay, okay. Uh... You arranged for the queen... Damn it! To be ambushed on this journey. What did they offer you? Uh... I'm not gonna pass it because Alex will just pass it and we'll just start passing it. I, you know what? I'm gonna X this one. No. All right. Negatory Ghost Rider, go away. Yeet. Throw it away. Now what? Now you draw another one. Oh, okay. Oh dear. Hang on, my computers. I like how you assumed I would just pass it. You're too lawful good to to take money and to attack the queen. Like, I come on. Play, I don't play d and I subscribe to <laughs> no alignment. Keep your alignments out of my stories. <laughs> but, I, but I am being real paladin right now, so I can't argue with that. <laughs> Who is this distant power you are traveling to, and why do they make you uneasy? They're my long lost cousin, Joe. No. Um, huh. You know, I feel like our queen hasn't really stirred the pot. Our society feels fairly normal. We don't, we don't have anything extremely wrong. She tries to minimize the impact of the wars on the present society. Royals be royal and eating their sandwiches. And this distant power, their society is entirely differently structured. Maybe a little anarchist. And it's making me question how we live our daily lives. And they, they, they're, uh, they're nocturnal. <laughs> really, that, that's, that's it. Do you, do you think this questioning comes out of, uh, this sword power bringing the idea up for you? Or is this something that's been somewhere in your mind for a long time? Oh, it's definitely been on my mind for a long time. Uh, one might assume that I question the validity of their humanity. <laughs> That's what makes me uneasy about this visit and not at all utterly fascinated. But also, I never thought about the idea that I could just, like, not sleep at night. Hello? Hmm. I don't want to be a vampire, yeah. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for the questions. Okay. I believe it's Alex's turn. One's a secret vampire. <laughs> One of these things not like the other. One of these things. Oh, damn you. <laughs> We're there. All right, Jim, it's the card. Do you want to explain what happens now? Well, yes, the queen is under attack. Do you defend her? We each uh, answer this question. Um, and if we wish, we can elaborate. But uh, officially, the game is over at that point. But we can we can we can talk about head cannon if we so desire. We did that last time, um, and uh, there we are. All right. And I will answer the question: The queen is under attack. Do you defend her? Yes, I defend her to the bloody end, whatever it may be. Goody two shoes. 
I have one job. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of my turn. Um, yeah, so we can e- we each must answer this question. Okay, so do I defend her? Yes. Um, I'm not physically strong, so I'm probably trying to find ways to get her away from whatever is attacking. Um, maybe this could be my moment. Yes. Yes. And I am grievously injured in the process. Oh, man. Uh, yes. Um, I have prepared. Uh, we knew the kind of things that were going to attack us. So I have the equipment ready to take said people down. (laughs) I, before making any defensive or offensive moves, fixate and study the mouth area, the the canine area of the the dental work. (laughs) I look at their visages. I look at their eyes. I beg the queen for a pocket mirror. And if I can verify, no, honestly, whether or not they're vampires, I still defend her with my illusory work. I have extra stakes if anyone needs them. (laughs) Good thing about stakes is that they also work on regular people, so if you have any left over, you don't have to waste them. Uh, they're, They're very handy. Decapitation with a sword covers all your bases. Just putting that Absolutely. out there. I'll also admit now that I think back that uh, that vampirism may have played a reason in why I had to kill my brother too, but we don't talk about that. Like I said, I'm not allowed to talk about the vampires. Why is he? <laughs> he could have been a daywalker. <laughs> These things happen, you know. Have we ever seen the queen in sunlight? Oh, I don't God, know. I knew before the queen vampire edition. That needs to happen now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, that is for the Queen. Thank you very much for playing. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, we have come to the end. And uh, I want to thank you all so much for coming and, uh, and playing this glorious game with me. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, we're going to go around and uh, one more time. And I'm actually going to go the opposite way. Um, we're going to go around and you can say where folks can find you and any final thoughts you have about this game. And so we will start with Levi. Hello, I am uh, Levi Phipps, Levi Phipps 97 on Twitter, and uh, yeah, this this was a great time, uh, real good group actually, and uh, yeah, always a good time to play this game and be on this channel, but uh, yes, uh, I don't have anything this coming week, but a week from tomorrow, we will be back on my channel, twitch.tv slash Levi Phipps. Uh, with Songs of, the, Songs of the Southern Mountains, a Hearts of Wu-Ling campaign that is at least in part inspired by Avatar The Last, the Last Airbender. And uh, like the second half of this will be uh, Legend of Korra. But uh, then uh, the day after that, we will be back with uh, on Twitch.tv slash phase with Mass Planned Obsolescence. Uh, it's interesting because our Civil War arc is becoming even less of a Civil War arc. And we left at a fairly tense moment after two playbook changes. And I am looking forward to see where our last little leg of the season is going to go. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, and uh, did you get to say, uh, did you get to say uh, any final thoughts about the game? Uh, yeah, just that it's all that this was a good group. And it's always a good oh, time. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Early onset <laughs> Alzheimer's folks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's now move around to Lee. Uh, hi, I'm Lee. Uh, I'm Leonsa on Twitter, uh, and uh, I really enjoyed this. I think I'm going to subject all of my friends to this game. Yay! Awesome, awesome. And uh, now let's uh, go over to Alex. Hi, uh, I am Alex Wolf. I am also Alex Wolf on Twitter. Not to be confused with the young softball enthusiast who happens to share my name. Um, we are off by one F. 
it is delightful when one tags the wrong person. Um, I love playing on Jim's streams. Um, you'll see me guesting in the Invisible Sun game at some point. Um, I run a lot of games locally. Um, Jess and I have an unhealthy rivalry in most of the games that we play. I don't know why this is becoming a thing now, I think. Um, but <laughs> uh, you'll find me at Gen Con in August running games for Monty Cook Studios um, or just find me hanging out on other people's streams. Um, that's pretty much all I do is play games and read books. This was amazing, Jim. Thank you again. I always have a great time on your channel, and I would love to do nothing but play games with you forever. Thank you so much. Uh, it is mutual. Thing. It is delightful anytime you're here. It is awesome. And uh, thank you so much for coming. This is, was lovely. I loved how, uh, how you did your character in this game. This was great. Um, and finally, let's move on to Jess. Yes. I... Super glad. Uh, I've been streaming less, but this has been an amazing game. I think For the Queen lends to being accessible, whether you buy the Roll20 module or you buy the cards themselves. They're cheap and provide such quality content. I mean, I've run it in an intro scenario where I'm like, here, it's like the For the Queen card is under like the 10th card. So everyone gets two rounds and it's really quick, but it's great for impromptu and improv. I think this game was, I appreciate you all for putting up with my shenanigans. <laughs> you know, For the Queen can be so serious and sometimes I deal with serious or injecting weird things into it. Um, aside from here, I can be found on Unmade Gaming's channel in a Cypher System campaign called The Men of Letters. It's a little bit of Cthulhu horror, but I mean, we're just dramatic people. So that's really fun. Um, other than that, just find me screaming on the internet about things on Twitter at Burst of Hope with a zero for O and of, and how I didn't know there was a Hearts of Berlin campaign on the answer of the last Airbender thing. My mind is blown, Levi. I must follow this. Hello. But thanks for having me, Jim. Oh yay! Thank you so much for coming. I. I... Uh, I confess I've been wanting to play with you for a very long time, so thank you so much. This was delightful and everything I could possibly have hoped for. Uh, <laughs> well, folks, uh, as for me, uh, I am Jim. I am Jim Ryan. Uh, I am uh, I am Other Doc on both Twitch and Twitter. Uh, my website is jimyesthatjim.com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I've got links down below to my website, Twitter, and YouTube channel. Uh, on this channel, uh, on Thursday, uh, we are uh, continuing our campaign, uh, short campaign of Bad Streets. Uh, that is a 1970s cop show powered by the apocalypse. Um, and uh, then on uh, over the weekends, generally, I do video games at various points. But uh, on Friday evening, I'm going to be over on Off the Table playing in their 1890s Urban Shadows campaign. Um, on Saturday, Saturday evenings, is when we do our Invisible Sun game uh, with various other development mode sessions when we can in between. Uh, we're, we're, we're work I think there's going to be one sometime this week. We haven't nailed down the date yet. But Saturday night is the regular campaign session for our campaign, The Edge of Paradox. Um, and uh, this coming Sunday, one week from today, our next one-shot will be Avarice, which is basically, as I've been saying, a game where, you, uh, where they take... Uh, a dwarf Fortress and The Quiet Year and Dread, and they put it in a blender and create a delightful subterranean catastrophe. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that. We still have signups technically are open for that. Uh, we could use another player or two uh, if anyone's interested. So uh, you can feel free if you want to click on the uh, uh, click on the sign up link down below or go into jimmyesthatjim.com and click on game sign up if you want to check that out. Also, sign ups are still open for Post Human Pathways, which we're doing a one shot of at the end of the month, uh, which is about transhumanism and the future of our species. A uh, very interesting story, little story game uh, by Jason Pizra. Uh, so uh, that too is available. As always, beginners are more than welcome. Well, when we hit the end card, um, I am uh, going to send a raid over to Variant Rolls. Uh, they are doing a Blades in the Dark one shot. And so if you are so inclined, feel free to stick around and say hi to them. 
Um, as we as we do our raidery, that'll be when we hit the end card. In the meantime, folks, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you all of a sudden. Farewell.